Heads up. Cool. All right, so one of the first things I want to do is let's see. Share my screen. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to pick up our where we left off with our um, PowerPoint. Let's look at our PowerPoint for Chapter 7. So the first question they ask is, how do groups differ from teams? Now, in Jeff Sutherland's presentation there, he mentioned, he mentioned uh, teams. He used the word teams over and over again. Um, I want to go ahead and present you a definition um, for these. All right. A group, um, at least from the perspective of this case and this uh, chapter, a group is defined as two or more people who are interacting with one another in such a manner that each person influences and is influenced by each other. So two key words, right? They're interacting with each other, and they are influenced by each other. Okay? Um, this is a group. Remember, at the very beginning, we defined uh, leadership as influence. Every one of you has some level of leadership, some level of influence uh, in your in your life and uh, people that you influence, right? We talked about roles, how each of you has a leadership within the roles and the gifts and the position that you hold. And that, um, you know, the, within that sphere, you're a king. Within that sphere, you have, um, you know, you have full control. Okay. So influence is important. Uh, then the, the book goes on and defines team slightly differently. Team. Team is, besides interacting and influencing, it says they share leadership, responsibility, for creating a team identity. Oh, that's important. A team identity. Achieving mutually defined goals and fostering innovative thinking. All right. So this is how we're adding to the definition of group and a team is more specialized, right? More leadership. Remember the strategic, uh, the, the, key, the key factors that we talked about on Monday um, that, define, that make you effective, that make you indispensable. Key factors were 
strategic thinking. Inspirational thinking and problem solving. Okay, there's an overlap between this idea of team and this idea of effectiveness. Teams are more effective than groups. Groups can influence the trajectory. Teams drive the results, right? As we were doing those um, assessments of roles and assessments of personality abilities, of, of leadership abilities, it's very important to drive results, not just influence results, but drive results. Strategic thinking, inspirational thinking, and problem solving are important. All right. So these are these are big words. They're cool words, but what do they mean? What um practically, what exactly does this mean? And so let's let's take the examples that Jeff Sutherland was presenting, right? His first example was the example of teaching this company to march right in this case he was part of a team and he exerted influence and we could even say leadership even though he wasn't the company commander even though he wasn't the the person who gave the orders who actually verbally expressed right he was kind of a sideline character but the strategic thinking here um the the key to that was what he called making it visible right strategic thinking is making it visible if you have a strategy and you're using strategic thinking the thinking is absolutely no good unless everyone else can see that thinking, right? Okay, this is a communication class. We're talking about how do you effectively communicate the ideas in your own head? And through communicating those ideas, you drive results. You drive um, the what happens within the team. You actually make things happen, right? A leader makes things happen. So the first thing in strategic thinking is if, if, if you can think strategically and you can plan your work, you need to get everybody else to see those plans. They have to be able to, in a, in a certain sense, be able to get outside of themselves, look at the process objectively, and see the different moving parts that um are that are connected that that have to do with um making this making this effective making this um happen all right the second one inspirational thinking so making it visible and i i kind of stepped in this already making it visible is communication right whether it's charts or it's um organizations it's maps it is mottos it's posters it's pictures whatever it is to drive that culture you make it visible and you and you start influencing the way people think and the way they see things inspirational thinking is taking that extra step and making it Proactive. Okay, inspirational. When you think of inspiration, an inspiration is someone who is so attractive that you that you want to do that. You want to be that. You want to follow. Right. If you're inspired, if somebody inspires you, it makes you move from the from the peer from the place of theory 
and and ideas and you know that's a neat idea to man i gotta do this right from thinking to doing and so inspirational thinking and by um you know by extension inspirational communication is where you are able to take your strategic thinking and make it attractive so that others want to follow they want to um enlist they want to fall in line they want to participate okay so you make it visible you make it attractive and then You'll notice once things get rolling, problems are going to crop up. I mean, the problems is a part of life. Problems is a part of any organization you're in. It's a part of any team you're in. It's a part of our fallenness nature, right? And the strength of your strategy and the strength of your inspiration then trans translates into the third step, which is how successful are you? by uh by removing obstacles right you get things rolling but the first problem that comes up oh i quit i'm done you know they're better than me they don't get me they don't understand what what i'm going through whatever and you start having people quit you start having people slow down you start having people freak out um and so that inspiration fizzles However, as a leader, how effective you are at problem solving, how effective you are at removing those obstacles and keeping the team moving forward, you know, even anticipating, oh, that's going to be a problem and being able to um, either work around the problem or fix the problem, those kinds of things are essential for excellent communication. All right. So now with these three things, um, removing obstacles, that was overcoming obstacles. With these three pillars of leadership, of effectiveness and indispensability, then that brings us to the next topic in our chapter, which is conducting meetings. So we don't conduct meetings just to have meetings, right? It's not just, um, even though there is an, a sense in which this is important, right? If we're a team, we share, right? We share a meal. We share space. We share laws. We share communication. All those things, you have to be together in order to share that, right? So that's, a, that's, that's an important thing. But there should be a higher missional goal in conducting meetings right and they should come back to these one of these three things or maybe all three you know your meeting is to project strategic thinking right your meeting is to help your followers understand what the next step is in the plan what the next campaign is what the next process is what the next um, task is, what the next challenge is. It's also another purpose of the meeting is to make it attractive, right? This is going to be great. You might bring in inspirational people. You might bring in inspirational pro processes. You might use inspirational music or, or I don't know, monetary incentives those are always inspirational right if you raise the the amount that you sell this month then we are going to give you a 250 dollar cash bonus at the end of the month now that's inspirational that suddenly makes um the extra effort that you're that your team need is putting in a little more attractive i mean hopefully there's more things than just money that attracts people but that's just an ex example that I was going to use there. Um, so conducting meetings is important. Um, and, and knowing why we're having meetings is important. 
And then the third one, of course, is sometimes you have to call meetings, and sometimes these are less scripted or these are less um forethought. Like, you know, you, like we have our meeting every every Monday. Sometimes you have to call a meeting more often than just Monday, Monday night, right? Um, and you have to say, hey, this came up. This is a problem. Well, this is this is um, something we have to deal with. Are there any ideas? How do we f how do we fix it? How do we solve it? What can we do? And through that process, so the the meeting itself is about problem solving. Is about how are we going to overcome these obstacles? Okay. I mean, we can talk about the mechanics of, of a meeting, but many of you all probably already know what a meeting looks like, right? You should have an agenda. Everybody should at least have an idea of what the meeting is for. You should have a time frame. You should have a progression. You know, first we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this. This distributes several days in advance. This is, this is great if if it if it's possible, unless it's like I said, dealing with a problem. Prioritizing agenda items. Okay, now, um, I said on Monday that there are going to be three projects, three possible or three potential projects, or um for this class and each group should choose one of them potential projects one would be you are simulating all, all these are simulated all right I'll, I'll put simulation there potential simulation projects the so one is you are an it development team and um, following Jeff Sutherland, you know, how he talked about the working for the banking industry and building software for them, and then working at MIT and building software that was distributed, you know, those are examples that he used. And agile software principles. The other possible um, example would be a business development team. And um, you're going to follow Six Sigma principles and mount Sales campaign. You have to. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll describe them here in just a minute. Your third one that I just had it up here. Your third one would be a legal defense team. And you're going to follow um, team management principles. And um, devise a legal defense plan. All right. In each one of these, you're going to have uh, three presentations. All right. You're going to have one the week of January the 4th.
I think I said January the 6th. You're going to present um, your, um, your problem. Present the problem that you want to solve. Y'all have to y'all have to research together, find a real world problem, and identify um, identified in in that particular realm that you chose, right? For IT, a software problem that can be fixed. In business, a a product um, that you need to you know manufacture. Um, put on sale and, and get to customers. And then in in law defense, um, you have a a case or a a legal problem, right, that needs a solution. So you're gonna present the problem that you want to solve and explain what it is. and its impact. All right, the second presentation, January 13th, is gonna be um, two to three potential solutions so basically you're going to prototype right it's not going to be fully developed but you're going to prototype two to three potential solutions presented to the class that will solve the problems and impacts stated previously. Okay, and then the rest of the class is gonna vote on which one of those problem, which one of those solutions they think um, they would like to see. Then your third project, your third, um, your third presentation I think it's the 20th this is that Wednesday whatever that Wednesday is these presentations will be your third presentation will be um, the selected solution developed and visualized as it solves the problem. So solvency. All right. So instead of having one presentation where you do all three, you're going to kind of actually step through all three. Um, you're going to break it down into into parts, as you would in a in a larger project, in a in a big you know Fortune 500 corporation, where you have to take on these large projects and you have to kind of conceptualize them in a on a larger scale. All right, so the scale is different when you're going into corporate America. And you have to think through, I mean, I mean, I'm not thinking, I'm not asking you to think of something this big, but just take, for example, for those that under, know anything about Brexit, right? The, um, the process of Britain exiting out of the European Union common market. It was a, pro, it was a problem, right? What were the impacts? They've been discussing this for four 
years. It has been a top list item in Congress for four years. If 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 you were to put the tons of ink spilled, the tons of hours, hundreds and thousands of hours of parliamentary debate that's gone into this, not counting the negotiations by um by Britain's governing people and the representatives of the EU sitting down and working out solutions. It, I mean, it's mind boggling. It's not something that you can just pop out, you know, in a 30 minute speech. So this um, that's an example of the other extreme of how big a solution could be or how big a problem could be. All right. Now I avoided government problems. So a legal problem does not necessarily mean a government problem or a political problem, right? Um, there may be an aspect to it in that, but a legal problem can be a personal or a civil disagreement between entities or between businesses, right? And so the legal defense problem, um, I'm going to let you all self, um, actually, I, I keep forgetting to do this. Let me go ahead and do it right now. Um I'm going to set up a discussion here. Um, sorry, not group, team. Team projects. Team one will be an IT problem. Team two, a business problem. Team three, a legal problem. So y'all have to do some research uh, and figure the and figure this out. You'll have to self-organize as a team assign leadership to different uh, leadership roles to different things keep notes right keep notes on what your problem is how you organize what each person did what um roles you have a question oh no my computer keeps taking me in and out of the chat so i keep having to come back in i apologize i apologize no you're fine I'm recording it, so you'll be able to go back and watch it straight through, hopefully, if you miss anything. I apologize. I know that's it's tough sometimes. Okay. Um, choose your team and your teammates. Post in the discussion who is doing what. There are nine people, three teams of three. All right. Um, this goes to everyone. Okay, I'm going to save this as it is and add this as part of your um, part of the information goes with it. Saved it today. Yep. Open. Allow threaded replies. Users must post before they see replies. Well, I'm not going to do that. Y'all can read. It is graded. Team 
projects. Possible points. Um, just for the discussion, the possible points are 10 points, but for the whole project, uh, including, um, it's a third it's 30 percent of your grade is the whole project including um all three presentations your um kind of your thought your your documentation on the whole team project and and this discussion at least to get started Everyone should be signed up by next week. I'm going to make it due, even though you can do it before then, before next Friday. But um, it's going to be open until January the 4th. Okay. Anything else? Save and publish. All right. Cool. Now, let's go back for just a second and look at the rubric in the in the syllabus. Evaluate the performance of team members. There it is. Well, this is one of the key learning outcomes of the thing. Evaluate the performance of team members based on clearly defined objectives and present that assessment in an honest yet constructive manner. All right, team presentation and written report. You will be randomly assigned to a team consisting of three members. As a team, you will develop procedural policies within your team, including division of labor and attendance. Your team will present on a topic related to communication excellence in the business and professional context that you select. During the planning phase, your team will define a culture, assess the problem, select a topic, Develop a plan of action and take any needed steps in preparation for the implementation phase. The implementation phase will include re writing a report, seven to 10 pages together, and giving an oral presentation together based on your research. Okay. So the three presentations that I said, right, the three different days, all together a 20% and the final written report is 15% all together. All right. So this is week four, right? You'll be, be randomly placed or you can self-select into a team for your presentation and written report. Each team will develop policies for performance and each team will establish a meeting schedule. Reading chapter seven. Um, and then I gave you not these journal articles that they cited here, but I gave you a couple of journal articles on Monday uh, from the Harvard Business Review on effectiveness. Okay. Now, are there any questions? I assume y'all want to all jump and run and see um, which person you're going to be working with or or kind of politicking among yourselves. It's, it's fine with me. Either way, y'all want to do that. 
Um, if you have issues, um, feel free to um, discuss it with me. Um, if you are kind of, if you get into one of the teams and you're kind of lost on on how to proceed, I can I have material for each kind of uh, scenario that I can help definitely help you with. And for sure, as teacher and facilitator, I'll be glad to attend any of your meetings. Okay, y'all plan your meeting, but I'll be glad to attend the meeting and give and do any kind of facilitation um, that you need me to as an expert um, uh, solution manager, you know, and a, a consultant, expert consultant, basically. So um, y'all think about that. Think who you'd want to work with. Think what you want to work on. And y'all can start start that immediately. I will be posting this video and the video from Monday um, here shortly. So your assignment for today is uh, get the discussion started and um, get into your teams. Next week, there are no meetings. Um, it will be um, a take home. Uh, midterm. Uh, it'll be a document. You'll download it, you'll fill it out, and you'll upload it by the end of, of next week, by the end of the week, yeah, by Friday. So next week, no class meeting, but it'll be um, take-home midterm. Say take-home. I know y'all are all at home, but you basically, um, you you fill it out on your own time, and just upload it at the end by the end of the week. Use any resources that you can find or you need to 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 find the answers, figure it out. Any more questions? So do we pick the teams like through the discussion thread? I mean, because yeah. I don't know every single person in the class. Yeah. Cool. I have right, a question. Oh, yes, ma'am, it's Ashley. I have a question at the end of class. Okay. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'm turning the uh, the recorder off, and um, I 